Hey, welcome to Vegan Finds, where we're going to turn this into to this butternut squash Wellington. Okay, folks, so right in front of me, I've got a butternut squash, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into butternut squash Wellington. You've heard of beef Wellington? Well, we're going to use butternut squash Wellington to make a delicious dish. Um, going to show you a few interesting items but the first thing we want to do is peel and cut up our butternut squash so I'm gonna peel it and just use one of your peelers now this I will say that butternut squash gets very slippery so it pays to have a good grip on your squash and we're gonna basically cut this into two separate entities we're gonna keep the skinny part um, whole well not whole but we're going to cut it in half and then we're going to take the bulbous end here and we're going to chop that part up so i'm going to peel this sucker up the other thing about this is it also gets kind of weirdly sticky All right, so I've got this peeled up. Now I'm going to show you how to break it down so we can get this in the oven to roast. Because this is going to be basically um, a, a multi-stage recipe here, and I want the longest part is going to be the cooking of the butternut squash. So I'll be back in a second. Let me just throw this stuff out, and I will show you how to put this together for the oven. So I'm going to separate the bulb from our even part and you want to use a heavy knife for this and what we're going to do is we're just going to basically slice this right down the middle like so we're going to set that aside this part we're going to basically scoop out the seeds now if you want to keep the seeds and roast them be my guest uh, I'm not going to do that right now I'm just going to get out a spoon I'm going to scoop this out and then we're going to chop it up I'm just going to slice off the end here Get the there we go and I shall show you what we're doing with this in a second so we've got our pieces here and basically we're just going to cut these up into cubes and we're going to roast them along with the Ooh. oops all right, having a bit of trouble today. Don't know what's going on here. My mind is elsewhere, which is not a good thing when you're using a very sharp knife. Even worse when you're using a dull one like I am. Okay, get this one chopped up. Okay, so I've pre preheating my oven to 400 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to roast this stuff for probably half an hour um, or so. There we go. Um, the bulb part is going to be part of our coating around the, we'll quote it, we'll call it butternut squash mignon because <laughs> this is well it's traditionally made with Chateaubriand or um, around here these parts um, we'd use filet mignon um, the Chateaubriand is not usually I mean it's not as it's not nearly as a common a cut um, as that so I got my pan here so I'm just gonna lay lay our stuff down in our pan gonna take our pieces here gonna toss them in as well dun, dun, dun. all right gonna drizzle it with a little bit of avocado oil
Gonna get some salt on these guys. Now this is a fairly substantial piece. Now one thing I'm gonna say is I'm actually only gonna use half of this because it's just Doris and myself who eat this. Uh, so uh, what you're gonna see is slightly different than than the directions are gonna be. Um, just simply because it's just the two of us and making a giant um, Wellington would just be a waste. So I'm going to use the, the squash for a, a different dish, always part of it. Um, I'm going to do some pepper as well. I need to get a pepper grinder. Will somebody out there remind me to get a pepper grinder? Alright, so i got some pepper here. And we're just waiting for our... Um, oven to come up to temp. We'll pop that in for half an hour. Okay, so while our butternut squash is roasting, uh, I'm going to start making what's going to go, which is uh, around the outside of the butternut squash, which is a mushroom duck cell mixture. Uh, and I found this really great product. i got to see if I can zoom in on it a little bit. Mm, don't know if you can see it. The the, the label is r rather tough, but it's a black truffle tapenade, and I'm gonna add this. I got this from a a website called Snuck Foods. That's S N U K F O O D S dot com. Now they have all sorts of fantastic ethnic things, and the one thing I really really like about um, the website is that they have a tab for vegan items so I can just click on the tab for vegan items and I can see all the different things that they have I got some really cool stuff that I can't wait to try I got um, this thing called garlitella which is a garlic dip from uh, Croatia um, I got some chili crisp uh, which is a, a, a kind of a chili a, a crunchy chili sauce and I got some uh, vegan pad thai sauce and if you know anything about us, um, you know we, lo we love Asian food, um, all of it, <laughs> Thai, Korean. We've done a lot of Korean. We haven't, done, we haven't explored the Thai yet, uh, but we will get to that um, sooner, sooner rather than later, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically chop up my um, two shallots. Now the thing with the... Um, with the duck cell is that you don't have to worry about how fine you chop anything for this simply because we're going to be putting it in a food processor um, to kind of process it not quite into a paste but enough that you can basically wrap wrap it around the um, butternut squash and you'll you'll see I mean it's not this isn't rocket science people you know it's cooking so, so well I shouldn't say that because now so so with some of the uh, molecular gastronomy things um, it, it almost feels like rocket science I've seen some of these people make stuff with various different uh, chemicals and it, it's cool that much I can tell you I don't know how you know if it tastes good it looks great um, but it's above my pay grade so I'm gonna start by chopping these up. I'm going to get my pan warmed up. And I'm going to start sauteing up the shallots and then I'm going to move on to the mushrooms. Got my um, shallots chopped up. I'm going to add them to my pan that's now heating. And we're going to basically saute these up for about eight minutes. Um, Oh, I need a spatula. So, um, we're going to... So, I'm chopping up my mushrooms while my um, shallots are sautéing here. It's starting to smell real good. And I'll show you the pan um, shortly. But, uh, I've also got two cloves of garlic. These are really large garlic cloves. So, I'm only using two. But you can use anywhere from two to four. Um, if they're on the smaller side, go with the four. If they're on the bigger side, go with two. Um, and again, we're just doing a, 
for the mushrooms we're just doing a rough slice for the garlic we're just gonna smash it and then just mince it up uh, pretty quick um, if my garlic press wasn't so dirty I'd be using that but uh, it's indisposed at the moment and I assume that everybody's doing a lot of cooking like we are and uh, of course um, we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff here uh, have cooked we haven't made a duplicate meal yet other than uh, making some vegan uh, pizza but other than that um, no no regular meal has been the same uh, let me just give the mushrooms a stir I also have some thyme here some fresh thyme and you and you know that I often use um, dry thyme so I'm just going to start throwing this into the pan right now because that's cooking up real nice now my pan's a little bit small but the mushrooms should shrink down quite a bit once they start to release their um, elixir as it were and I'm just going to show you quickly how to do this you just basically bash it down and move that out of the way and you just again it's, this is all going to go into a food processor to make our little mushroom duck cell and the nice thing about this is that you could use this in other things so if you have extra save it you could turn it into a ravioli filling you could use it on a as a topper for burgers um, lots of different uses for it just gonna throw that in there all right so basically all of our chopping is now done I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a stir and I will move the pan over so you guys can see what I'm doing so as you can see the mushrooms have started to really cook down I'm gonna start I'm gonna take um, a couple sprigs of fresh thyme here I'm just gonna basically um, remove the leaves here as best I can without getting the twig in so you don't want the twig in there although pulverizing it probably not gonna make much of a difference but better better to be safe than sorry you can see that the mushrooms are releasing a lot of their liquid here and we're going to be adding a little bit of tamari to this as well um, I'm not going to add the truffle part to this until closer to the end um, actually at the end of making this because I want to make sure that we don't lose the flavor by cooking it out uh, I've never used this product before um, I bought it because it was on sale so uh, you, you know where my thinking's at so I, one of the cool things I wanted to show you um, the packaging came with this this thing and you think oh packing peanuts very bad for the environment but these are actually made out of cornstarch and you put them in your sink run some hot water and they dissolve I mean how cool is that so the the package the the inner packaging is very sustainable um, which is nice and you know obviously you can reuse the bubble wrap because if you're buying glass you're not just going to pack it with packing peanuts um, not unless they're crazy but um, these are great people so uh, I'm real excited and looking to buy some more stuff okay so it's what is what? I haven't put anything in there, but I'm going to put this in. Ooh. That's right. Ooh. Black truffles. I just need to see how much. Oh, just a tablespoon. I'm not even going to and as you can see, the mushrooms are really breaking down 
going to add a tablespoon, also known as a capful of tamari, to this. Can you get me the um, food processor? Because that's where this is going into. Now we have basically two other ingredients um, that we're going to be adding to our food processor once it's ready to go. That is numero uno walnuts. And we're going to we're going to toast the walnuts. We're just going to throw them in the pan with our butternut squash. Um, it's on something. Uh, and we're also going to saute up uh, a handful of spinach, which is going to add just a nice dash of color and obviously some additional vitamins, um, some iron, and uh, good stuff. So I'll be back when we're ready to put everything together to go into the food processor. Don't blink. So I'm adding our mushroom mix to our food processor here. Doo -doo -doo. The butternut squash isn't quite ready yet. Um, and the pieces that we chopped up are going to go into the pan as well. Uh, I'm not even going to bother scraping this thing out because I'm going to add our spinach to this pan in a little bit. So in here is going to go some walnuts, um, the, left, the chopped up butternut squash, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of... Dijon mustard. Which I'm going to do right now. So, just in case you missed that, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard in with our mushrooms. Okay, so our um, butternut squash is done roasting. So, I'm going to take the little pieces. I'm going to add them to our food processor and you can see look at they got a nice um, caramelization on there. I'm going to take my walnuts, add them. It's not quite that easy. I really picked the wrong kind of pan for this, but I figured it would be a little bit easier to clean. Oh, it smells so good. I gotta tell you. Roasted butternut squash. Mm -mm -mm. Cannot complain about that. We've got almost all the pieces out. Okay. There we go. So everything's ready to be blended. So I'm going to go blitz this up. I'll be back in a flash to show you what it looks like. Going to adjust the seasonings. Um, and uh, basically, um, then I'm going to add a little bit of our black truffle paste. And then it'll be time to assemble. Okay. Those two little um, tablespoons were plenty enough to um, flavor this. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and take our little doohickey out here. Oh, I just smell the truffles are just like punching you right in the face. It smells so good. And now we're going to get everything ready. Our butternut squash is ready to go. Um, now we just have to put it into the puff. Oh, I almost forgot the one other ingredient, which is the spinach. So I'll be back to show you how to cook that up. It takes two seconds. Then we'll assemble all of this together. Okay, so I got my pan heating up. I've got some washed spinach. And I'm just going to take a handful. One handful. That's all I'm going to need. We're going to start letting that cook down. I'm going to throw in a couple more. Um, and I'm going to get uh, about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of water to 
drop in here and you can already see it's starting to steam up um, and that's basically it this is going to cook down to virtually nothing I mean that's the one thing about spinach you get a giant bag you cook it and you got two tablespoons out of it so I'll be back with my water and we'll finish this thing off in a heartbeat and again I didn't clean out the pan from before because there's still flavor in there you might as well let the flavors from the last ingredients flavor your next ingredient unless of course you're making a completely different dish then wash in between and as you can see it doesn't take long for this to basically cook down this will be done in another five or six seconds and then we can assemble so I've got my vegan puff pastry ready to go I just need to have a spot to assemble everything Ooh, a little piece of leftover squash there mm. oh my god that's so good All right, so my directions to assemble this is going to be slightly different than what you see because I'm only going to use half of what I cooked. So, and instead of using two pieces of puff pastry, I'm only going to use one. So you're going to see the directions are going to be different than, than the actual visual. So if you're feeding a big group, and you're using both halves of the um, of the butternut squash. Follow the written directions. First thing we're going to do is we're going to spread some of our mushroom right down. You want to leave some some space on the edge because I'm going to fold this over. Now, normally speaking. You would put both pieces down and just you would have one piece down you'd have both pieces of butternut squash down and then you could just cover it um, with one piece of the pastry okay gonna just I'm gonna get a quick measure on our size here Yep, that's good. Okay. You can see how nicely caramelized that is on the it's gonna taste fantastic. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more. Just so we can kind of have it even steven around the edge when we fold it. Oh, this looks so good. Next step is to add our spinach. It's still a little hot. And I got just the right amount. Now, if you don't like spinach, or you want to use kale or some other green, go right ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. Or, you don't want to have spinach in there at all, go right ahead. I mean, for many years I was not a very big spinach fan because the only thing I knew was cream spinach from a frozen package that just smelled like holy hell. That's about a, that's about the best way I could put it. Alright, so now we're going to pop that down. I'm going to make sure that... Oh, see? I'm going to have to move it over. A bit. All right, we'll make it work. We'll just have, end up folding some of it up. We'll figure it out. So I'm going to add a little bit more of this to the top, just to kind of smooth it out. <sighs> Smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. Doris would be shocked I'm using my fingers only because this smells so good 
Okay. Almost there. And I still have plenty left to make some other fun stuff with this. Okay. Beautiful. So I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get this all closed up. I'll be back in a flash. Folded over the top and I kind of just pushed it in as I went along. You can see some of the fillings popping out. Just eat that. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, the tines of a fork to press down the edges and again if some of the filling spills out that's fine also you're going to need some holes at the top and I'm just going to kind of cut the excess off and that hole will be a venting hole so that'll be fine and uh, crimp it and go so this is going to go into an oven at 400 degrees for 35 minutes. You're going to want to brush this over with some almond milk or whatever non-dairy milk you have and uh, basically that'll be that. It'll you know basically brown real nice and uh, you're going to have a delicious absolutely delicious dish. Okay so I'm just kind of putting on our little vegan milk here. I'm going to add a little decorative piece here. Those extra pieces can cover up a lot of sins. <laughs> if, you're be if you're better at cutting pastry than I am, um, you can make a nice little pattern. Okay. We are almost ready to go into the oven. Beautiful. All right, so this is going to go into the oven for 35 minutes, 400 degrees. We'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so this is our Wellington out of the oven. Um, it was cooking, it cooked for 35 minutes um, at 400 degrees. I did have the uh, convection fan on as well. You can see it's nicely browned here. Um, looks and smells fantastic, and we're going to get ready to cut it right now. Well, you know what? I just took it out. Let me give it a minute or two to rest, um, and then I will cut it. We're going to cut this baby. Maybe I should use a serrated. Oh, I'm going to turn this thing around. I've already cut the end off. It smells fantastic. All right. Timber. It's a two, two prong process here. There we go. Oh, can you smell that? No. Uh-oh. Wow. Look at that. You got your mushroom layer. You got your butternut squash. You got your spinach. What could be better? So. What's the size of a piece of butternut squash? <laughs> I wasn't giving that to you. Jeez. You know. She does literally no part of the cooking, and then she complains about the piece she gets. That was just the cutter, the tester piece. So, if you like these recipes, I cook. Quick subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, and follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on TikTok, follow us on. Something else. Instagram. Enjoy, be healthy, and be safe.